Hello! So previously, we talked about how gene therapy can be used to provide a transient cure for skid. Now, we'll move on to discuss how cystic fibrosis can be treated with gene therapy using either a non-viral gene delivery system or a viral gene delivery system. Let's now first talk about the background of cystic fibrosis. It's basically caused by a deletion mutation involving three nucleotides on chromosome 7, resulting in the loss of phenylalanine in the polypeptide. It's an autosomal recessive disease. This mutation affects the membrane protein known as the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator, such that it's missing or defective. It's a huge mouthful to say at any one time, so from now on, we'll call it CFTR. In normal individuals, CFTR controls movement of the chloride ions into or out of the cells and influences sodium ion transport indirectly as a result. In the lungs, defective or missing CFTR results in chloride ions not being transported out of the epithelial cell. Due to a charge balance, sodium ions are also retained as a result. This decreases the water potential of the cell, causing water to be retained within the cell and hence causing the mucus to remain undiluted. This undiluted mucus is thick and it's unable to flow, leading to congestion. And because it stays in the respiratory tract for too long, the mucus becomes very conducive for bacterial growth. This might lead to a lung infection and severe breathing difficulties. Patients have to be treated with daily physiotherapy to physically remove the mucus. Unfortunately, most of them die by age 30. Besides experiencing problems with their lungs, the patient's pancreatic duct is also choked by thick mucus, preventing the release of enzymes. This leads to indigestion. Also, the thick mucus layer in intestines also reduces the absorption of digested food. When our sweat gland produces sweat, as the salty sweat rises up the sweat duct towards the pore, the upper duct reabsorbs chloride ions while sodium ions enters the sweat duct via sodium ion channels. This prevents excessive water loss. With a defective CFTR protein, no reabsorption of sodium chloride occurs, hence causing great amounts of salty sweat to be exuded from sweat glands. Hence, one basis of diagnosis for cystic fibrosis is actually to measure the concentration of chloride ions in sweat. Let's now move on to talk about how gene therapy using liposomes can be used to alleviate symptoms of cystic fibrosis. First, we we'll need to isolate a normal functioning CFTR gene and then insert this gene into the liposome. This gene containing liposome is then delivered to the lung via aerosol spray. The liposome will fuse with the membrane of the epithelial cell and thus release the DNA into a cell known, as, known in the process known as lipofaction. The gene may either enter the nucleus and may be integrated into the genome, hence allowing CFTR gene to be transcribed and translated. The normal CFTR protein will hence be incorporated into the plasma membrane. This treatment is transient as epithelial cells are continuously being shed, so repeat therapy is required. Alternatively, a viral delivery system may be used. Adenoviruses may be used in this case. These viruses cause throat infections but not cancer because it is able to express its genes without needing to insert its genes into the genome of its host. As a safety precaution, the virus is usually modified to remove the disease-causing genes, as well as genes that allow the virus to replicate. This modification also makes room for the foreign gene as the viral capsid has very limited space. It is then allowed to infect the epithelial cells and transfer its genetic material into the cell. Gene therapy is considered successful when four steps have occurred. Firstly, DNA is successfully introduced into the cell via a vector system. Secondly, transcription of the LU has occurred. Thirdly, the mRNA is successfully translated into protein. And lastly, the protein must be functioning. Unfortunately, 
the success rate is very low as less than 1% of target cells take up DNA. At this checkpoint, you should be able to describe cystic fibrosis and its effect on the patient as well as talk about the gene therapy approach for this condition. You should also be able to name the four steps that must occur before gene therapy is considered to be successful.